I'm starting to think that my inner anime fan is coming back to the surface. This is the third game in an anime style that I've reviewed, and the fourth that I've bought so far this year. Either that, or I'm just really tired of these games that look super realistic. Maybe it's that one. I've maybe only played an hour of the first Dark Souls. Maybe two. All I know is I just remember not liking it and feeling that the controls were quite clunky. It's just that the first Dark Souls rubbed me the wrong way. And while I have Dark Souls 2 and 3, never played them, the first one just really turned me off to the whole Souls-like genre. But Code Vein, however? I was a bit surprised to see that From Software didn't make this game. But instead it was made by Shift, who are known for the God Eater series. Well, except for God Eater 3. And I have those games too, but I haven't played them either. Code Vein was published by Bandai Namco, which is why I thought From Software made it. Because it really looks like all that Dark Souls gameplay that Jim Sterling loves to upload to his channel when he makes a rant or Jimquisition videos. Code Vein uses nothing from the Dark Souls franchise other than how the game plays. And this game is fantastic looking. Better than Astral Chain, but well, that was on the Switch. The set pieces are phenomenal looking and the dystopian looking city feels desolate and really perfect for an end of the world setting. And like Astral Chain, I would be interested in seeing an anime series like this. There is some texture pop in sometimes, but it loads really quickly. It's one of those blink and you'll miss it type of speeds. The game seems to have a few optimization issues on PC. You can change the frame rate cap anywhere from 30 to 240 frames a second. And for me, on the highest settings, the game defaulted to 60. But there was some frame stuttering in areas, so I had to bump it up to 144 frames a second. That way I was able to get a smoother frame rate. Which on my PC with a Ryzen 2700, 32 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, I don't think it should do that at all. I really enjoyed the music. It sets the stage and atmosphere of this destroyed world. The voice acting, although I did start skipping through spoken dialogue sections because I was reading the subtitles, a lot faster than the characters were talking. I mean, your character never talks, but I did hear one line of dialogue that I think was a glitch come from my character. I fell down a hole, landed on the ledge that should have killed me, and I should have died, but my AI partner saved me and I heard my character say a line in Japanese. From a gameplay perspective, it's pretty much anime Dark Souls. For the most parts, that's what it is, but it feels faster and smoother than the first Dark Souls, from what I can remember. The character creator is pretty extensive and you may spend quite a long time in it. I know I did and you can always go back and change the look of your character. Combat requires strategy. You can't run in head first and expect to come out on top. You have a normal attack and a heavy attack and that one can be charged for extra damage. Your blood veil, which is the equivalent to armor, grants you a parry ability. And on a successful parry you'll deal a massive amount of damage if you don't outright instantly kill the enemy. You're able to change your class on the fly, and changing your class will change your abilities that use Ecor, which is pretty much mana or MP, you don't get a lot of it. Each class can wield a variety of weapons, but they usually do better with a specific one, and each class has a set of abilities called Gifts. They're either passive or need to be activated, and those will use Ecor. You have the ability to regenerate, which works exactly like Estus in Dark Souls which refills a portion of your health, and you can use up to a certain number of charges, and they can be recharged at this game's version of bonfires called Mistels, which also function in the same way, restoring your health, allowing you to fast travel, all the while making enemies respawn at the same time. You could use Haze, which is this game's currency and the equivalent to Souls, to level yourself up, unlock gifts that you've acquired, or return to your home base and use it as a form of currency to buy stuff from the vendors. 
The home base allows you to talk to the group of characters that take you in and your traveling companion. And there's weapons in an item shop, but you can give the characters items as well. The more they like an item, the more points you'll get from them, and these points can be exchanged for items that can upgrade or transform your weapons and blood veals. Now I said that combat requires strategy. Some people will argue that Dark Souls is a rhythm game. However, this isn't Dark Souls, so I do not know if I'm able to make that comparison because this game wasn't made by From Software. Like this area, for example, there's a huge behemoth of a monster and three smaller monsters on either side of a narrow ledge. Two of the smaller enemies will fire at you. Running in headfirst into this encounter will certainly lead to your demise. So you can use long range attacks to pick off the three smaller ones, and your partner will block for you, depending on which partner you have. Then you can take on that big birth of an enemy a lot easier. And there's a boss shortly after that. The class I had chosen wasn't very effective as the boss used poison attacks. But once I went back to home base, I got another class from one of the characters. And that allowed me to cleanse poison, and then I was able to down the boss with little difficulty. Or there's the third boss, who I found harder on the first phase than the second phase. Once you start seeing how an enemy attacks, you can figure it out. One of my strategies was to stay almost literally up their ass and wail on their backside and dodge roll in the direction they turn to stay on their back. Was it the best strategy? I don't know. Was it effective? Oh yeah, it was. And whenever I had issues with an encounter or died, I would run back to grab my haze and then use an item to return or run away to the closest missile, level up, improve or change blood codes, and then upgrade gifts and return to base. I'd switch out AI partners, improve my equipment, and then go back and try again. While challenging, it is no way unfair. You're just screwing up by going in unprepared, or you're using the wrong strategy. There's 14 bosses, of which I'm assuming that's how many there are, because after 9 hours, I looked through the achievement list, only to find out I beat 3 bosses, and found 5 different areas, and unlock 10 or 12 different blood codes. Exploration is highly encouraged and in fact required. There's a map with dots that'll help you along your way so this way you're not running around in circles. Although you may find yourself doing that because you want to find those missiles that help you along the way. I found my AI partners to be irritating at times because they would throw off my timing when it came to trying to parry attacks. Or they would attack when I try to take a stealthy or strategic approach. I've had an AI partner go on the attack when I was using camouflage and an ability to suppress the sound of my footsteps. One time I just said screw it and ran and my partner was defeated and the enemies will chase you for quite a while too. I don't know if they'll stop, but I wasn't going to find out. Using regeneration has a delay on it, like too much of a delay to the point where I've used it twice by accident because the first time was either interrupted by an attack but still registered, but didn't happen right away, or for some reason the game delayed its registration even if I wasn't in battle or anything at all. Or sometimes it felt like the game was delaying it on its own accord, causing me to use it accidentally twice and waste one. And using it slows down your movement speed, and that just feels dumb. I get it from a gameplay perspective. You're healing yourself in a game that requires strategy, so you need to plan it out. But it's not like Dark Souls where you're drinking something. Running and drinking isn't an easy task. In this game, you're clenching your fist. I can run when I choose to, and not for long, and I can clench my fist at the same time. It's one of those things where, from a gameplay perspective, it makes sense, but from a visual and story perspective, makes none. And the story is pretty interesting in how they set up the world, and it really got me into it for the most part. You are what's called a revenant, which is fancy talk for vampire. They have very little memories and thirst for blood, otherwise they'll frenzy and then mutate into the lost, which are the monsters that you fight. The outside world has what's called a miasma that speeds up the frenzy process, so they wear air filters while they look for blood beads, or humans, so this way they don't frenzy and turn into the lost. Your overarching goal is to restore the land of Vane and the Blood Springs. The lore isn't that deep, and while there may be a sequel, this game comes off as a one-and-done type of game. And while the lore isn't deep, there is a lot of it. And there is a difference between a lot of lore and deep lore. Dark Souls would be deep, Code Vane is a lot, just shallow. 
not bad, but just like, don't expect Dark Souls type of stories here. Because I know what this game's demographic may be. It may be people who want to play Dark Souls, but with an anime twist. Just temper your expectations for the story. And finally, what really irritated me about this game was that your AI partner does not shut up. And they will repeat the same lines of dialogue over and over again. And it gets really annoying because they never, and I mean they never say anything useful. They never point you in the right direction. They just go, oh, did you find something useful? Oh, that's worth a lot. Oh, did you find something useful? Oh, we could use that later. I'm lost. Tell me where I need to go. This area that you keep pointing me back to in story scenes, pointing me back to the main city... I have a 100% map completion, and I can't find out where I need to go. There's a big gorge that I can't get across, and there's a ladder that I can't climb up for some reason, and I don't know how to get there. Why can't I stand on your shoulders and pull the, pull the damn ladder down so I can keep going and keep playing this game? I've been lost for 9 out of 5 hours. I mean 5 out of 9 hours. And the thing is, I had to stop after nine hours because I may have never gotten this review up. I would still be playing this game. And this game is something that I need a guide for. And I couldn't even find one online. That wasn't at least a video-based one. And I avoid video-based guides because I avoid those walkthroughs. Not because of spoilers. I could not care less about spoilers. But because it's so much harder to find where I am and where I need to go in relation to what someone else is doing on their video walkthrough. And I'm not going to spend more hours of my time trying to find out where I need to be just because I got to scrub through their videos. Like, okay, I did this. Skip ahead. Okay, I can't get there. So I got to go back again and say, okay, this is what they did. It's just... I need to find a strategy guide for this game. And then I'm going to go back to it. And then I'm going to play it smart because I really do like this game. From what I played, I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to get back into it. I just gotta find a better guide to get me to where I need to be. And you know, we used to have a saying among my group of friends that, you know you're playing a good RPG, or you're at least playing an RPG correctly, when you are completely and utterly lost in where you need to go.